All right, let's start today recalling um, a fundamental theorem from our past because we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of line integrals. And <clears throat> previously we looked at a fundamental or part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, and that was the integral from a to b f prime of x dx equals so. Yeah, if we've got this uh, derivative that we can integrate, then uh, we get back to um, the antiderivative, um, so to speak. Gives us a, a way to evaluate uh, a definite integral. Well, there's a version of this for line integrals. <laughs> and here it is. Suppose. C is a smooth curve <coughs> the vector function RT from uh, T going A to B and also suppose gradient vector <coughs> gradient of f alright so c is this smooth curve defined by the vector function and then uh, f has a gradient vector that's continuous on f as well. Then, here's the uh, payoff then. <coughs> the integral of c for our gradient vector dotted with differential dr. Turns out that's going to just be equal to f evaluated at r minus f evaluated at r of a. <coughs> Alright, so here's the significance of this. This is the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Um, <coughs> very similar to the fundamental theorem of calculus because what we've got here, r of b plus r of a, we've got it of our terminal thing, right? Because we're going from A to B for this uh, for this curve R T. <coughs> so R of B, that would be the terminal point, and R of A would be the initial point. And so what this says is this line integral then is F evaluated at the terminal point minus f evaluated at the initial point. Um, so, yeah, <coughs> this um, line integral is um, Okay, so <coughs> that's it. Okay. Um, so much like the fundamental theorem of calculus, yeah, the this line integral really is just uh, just depends. You just have to calculate the the function value at the terminal point minus. So it's just it just depends on the function value at those two uh, at those two values. <coughs> and uh, one other thing we might note here is that um, since we've got uh, the gradient of f and we've <coughs> we've
we can find this um, function f, this is, uh, this is a conservative vector field too. So if it's a conservative vector field, basically what this is saying is you just have to evaluate, to evaluate the integral, you just have to um, know that those two function values for f. Okay? And so for example, <clears throat> let's evaluate, probably need more room here, so. The line integral, gradient of f dot dr, it works two dimensions, three dimensions, four dimensions, how many of you got? Cosine pi x plus sine pi y minus x, y, z. The function of c is any path from one, one half to <clears throat> okay. So uh, previously on our line integrals, we specified our our path, but <coughs> really it uh, it doesn't matter here because since we know the function by the fundamental. Um, Theorem of calculus, uh, theorem of in line integrals. <coughs> we know that this is uh, just the function value at the initial point minus the function value at the terminal point. Um, and so R of t can be any path. So our integral from C gradient of F dot dr is function value evaluated at R of A. Well, R at A, that's our initial point, and so that would be 1, 1 half 2. I'm oh, sorry, it's R of B minus R of A, so this would be <coughs> this would be our R of B. B, so it'd be 2, 1, negative 1, minus f of 1, and 2. And so to evaluate this line integral, all we have to do is plug those in to our original function. So 2 for x, 1 for y, negative 1 for z, so that would be uh, cosine of 2 pi plus sine of pi times 1 plus pi minus x times y times z, so that would be uh, 2, maybe 2, and x minus would be positive 2. Minus 2, f valued at 1, 1 half 2, so that would be cosine of pi plus sine of pi over 2, because so y is a half, and then minus 1 times a half times 2, that would be, uh, that would be 1. <coughs> this is the cosine, cosine of 2 pi is 1, sine of pi is 0, and cosine of pi is 1, uh, 
sign of pi over 2. Plus one. All right, plus one. Okay. All right. So, yeah, it turns out <laughs> really no uh, integrating integrating to be done because of this fundamental uh, theorem of uh, of the line integrals. Uh, the way it turns out. <clears throat> And the, uh, <clears throat> the path doesn't matter either, um, which is not the case for a lot of our integrals, a lot of, you know, uh, of the line integrals. Um, the, you know, the first ones, uh, the first line integrals that we worked was definitely, I mean, if we changed the path, that changed the value of the line integral. Well, in the case of... Uh, Conser uh, conservative vector fields, that is not the case. It's, it's independent, uh, independent of, of the path. And so let me, let me go through a couple of uh, just definitions here. <clears throat> Let's say we've got F is a conservative vector field. I'll continue because I want to review. All right, <clears throat> number one. Um, we talked about it already today previously, but just a reminder, F is conservative. How? How is F conservative? <clears throat> if there is a function F such that the gradient of F <laughs> equals vector field F. Okay. Yeah, so if there's <coughs> F is a conservative vector field, if we can find or if there is a function such that the gradient of F, the vector field uh, formed with the partial derivatives, and that equals our big F vector field. And recall that. Uh, that's the case. F is called the uh, potential function. Okay. So that's what we mean by conservative. Okay. All right. <clears throat> then um, a line integral of vector field F dotted with dr. That is said. This line integral is independent of path if if those if that's equal for any path C1, C2, C2, with the same initial and final path.
makes sense because yeah if you've got any two paths and the line integral is the same no matter what makes sense to call that uh, independent of path so <clears throat> from our previous theorem then we've got the gradient of f dot dr that's independent of path because we said it didn't matter what the c was as long as you knew the uh, initial point and the terminal point uh, you can calculate this integral so it won't matter the path so <clears throat> this is independent of path also note there that <clears throat> since by number one here if we've got f being conservative then we've got the gradient of f equals our vector f and so um, if f is conservative then our in line integral f dr we can rewrite it as the line integral gradient of f dot dr and so we know that's independent path. So if f is conservative then Evaluate its line integral over curve C by just doing the, the potential function's value at um, the initial point and the terminal point, subtracting those two. Okay? All right, now, <laughs> just a couple of other definitions that of words you might uh, see pop up, probably seen these, probably seen these before, just a reminder. Um, path C is closed if its initial and terminal points are the same. here and then go around wherever you want to go and as long as you wind up where you started that's called closed <clears throat> if you start somewhere and then finish somewhere else that's not closed okay path C is simple <clears throat> if it doesn't cross itself cross itself it's called simple <coughs> and so both of these would be uh, would be simple um, the figure eight would be closed but it would not be simple because it crosses uh, crosses itself so it, thing where it crosses itself would not be simple so simple you just can't cross cross over. And then uh, as far as region D here, region D is open if it doesn't contain any of its values. out the boundary points it's it's called open uh, for a region and then uh, region D is connected uh, 
here. Any two points in the region. There's a path completely in deep. So if we're talking about an area here, that's region C, that's of course, that would be connected. If we have region D, it can have a hole in it, okay, so let's say that's region D. You know, we can connect any, uh, like a donut, we can connect any point, any point in there to any other point. But, you know, if region D happens to be you know, two, two separate entities, um, yeah, you can't draw a path connected to uh, from this point over here to, to another point from that one. And so uh, that one would not be uh, <coughs> not connected there. That one would not be connected. And then uh, region D is simply connected If it's connected, obviously, and there's, and there's no hole. So my second one here, so this one would be simply connected also, but this one is connected, but it's not simply connected because um, it has a hole in it. 